welcome to Unit 10, Lesson 1, where we will be learning about different polynomial operations we can perform. So in this unit, we're going to be dealing with things called polynomials, which is a fancy term for an expression that involves different x terms to different degrees. A couple vocab words that we're going to be dealing with. Before we get into that, we're going to talk about something called standard form. Standard form is when you write your polynomial from the highest exponent down to the lowest exponent. So each one of these pieces of the polynomial are called terms. Terms are separated by addition signs. If you don't have an addition sign, instead you have a subtraction sign, it's really a plus a negative. So for this example, we have 5x as a term, 2x to the fourth is a term, negative x squared is a term, and 8 is a term. We're looking at the degree of each of these terms, which is the exponent. If you don't see an exponent, there's really a little one up there. So this term is to the first degree, this is to the fourth degree, this is to the second degree, and this last term is called a constant because it doesn't have x at all. We're going to rewrite this expression to put the highest degree first. So 2x to the fourth is going to come first. It's a positive 2x to the fourth, but we don't need that plus sign if it's in the front. The next highest degree is this x squared, and it's a negative x squared, so we're going to put that next. Negative x squared, and we put a subtraction symbol because it's negative. Now this x term is going to come before the constant term. So this positive 5x is going to come next. If I don't put anything in between, I don't know if I'm adding or subtracting. Since this was positive, we didn't see a negative, we're going to put a plus in between. And finally, this 8 is going to come down to say plus 8. We've now rearranged this expression to be in what's called standard form. Standard form is the acceptable way to finish problems. Now, I want to expose you to a little bit of vocab for this lesson. Based on the number of terms, we have different names for polynomials. So if there's one term, so you don't see any addition signs, that's called a monomial. If there's several terms, like four or more, we call that a polynomial. They're really all polynomials, but we get lazy with our language after four and stop giving it special names. The two interesting ones that we'll talk about a lot in this chapter are binomial and trinomial. Binomial means there's two terms, one, two, and trinomial means there's three terms, one, two, three. We also classify polynomials based on degree. When you don't see an exponent, we talked about that that means that the exponent is really 1, and that's called linear. When the highest exponent in the problem is 2, that's called quadratic. This chapter really starts to zone in on quadratics. That's the most important type of problem we're going to deal with in this chapter. If the highest degree is 3, we call it cubic, and anything beyond 4, we start to just call it by the numbers. So this would be a fifth degree. If the highest degree was 12, we would call it a 12th degree polynomial. So we said this unit was about operations of polynomials. Well, two very important operations are addition and subtraction. Addition's pretty easy. We're really just combining like terms. Subtraction, we're gonna have to do something with distribution, which I'm gonna explain when we get to it. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. This first one is an addition problem as we see a plus sign in between two polynomials. Plus signs are really simple. We're just going to get rid of the parentheses because I have this polynomial and I also have this polynomial. So I don't need to separate them with parentheses. I can just put that all out there. That's the really easy first step of addition is just get rid of all the parentheses. Now the next skill is just going to be combining like terms. Remember that we want our answer to end up in standard form, so we want to deal with the highest degree first, which in this case is the second degree. So I have two x squared terms, a 3x squared and a 2x squared. I'm going to combine those to get 5x squared. Next, I'm going to look for first degree x's, which I see here and here. So I have an x term, really a 1x term, and a 4x term. I'm going to put those together to make a 5x. Notice how I'm leaving things underlined so I can see which terms I've addressed so far and which terms I haven't. The two terms remaining are both constant terms, which always go last, negative 1 and 7, which if I add together, I get 6. And because of the order I went in, starting with the second, then the first, then the constant degree, my answer is already in standard form, and there's no more combining like terms that I can do. I can't put a second degree together with a first degree, a first degree together with a constant, or any other combination here. So the problem's over. Now number three is a subtraction problem, but it's not all that different. The first step is really the major difference. 
What you need to do when you have subtraction is think of it as really like a negative one outside of the parentheses. The previous problem was like a positive one in front, but distributing a positive one doesn't really do anything. One doesn't change the problem at all. That's why we can just get rid of the parentheses with an addition problem. But with the subtraction problem, when I distribute the negative one, it's gonna change the sign on everything in the right set of parentheses. So I'm simply gonna drop down everything exactly the same from the left set of parentheses. And on the right set, I'm gonna get a negative 2x squared, a negative 5x, and a negative times a negative makes a positive eight. This step of distributing the negative is the most important part because everything else is back to just combining like terms. Once again, I'm gonna start with my second degree since that's the highest. So I have two different types of x squared terms, a four x squared and a negative two x squared, which combined give us a two x squared. Then I'm gonna look for my x terms, which would be a negative two x and a negative five x, which put together give me a negative seven x. And then I'm down to my constants, three and eight make 11. Again, because I went in that degree order, my final answer is already in standard form and the problem is over. And these two problems give us a really good idea of how to add and subtract polynomials. Our last operation we're gonna learn about is how to multiply polynomials. I like to think of these problems as what I call double distributing. We're gonna distribute every term from the first polynomial to every term in the second polynomial. And then we're back to that step of just combining like terms. This is really easy when the first polynomial is a monomial, a one-term polynomial, because this is really just the distributive property. I bring x squared to x to the third. Using my exponent rules, that's x to the fifth. I bring x squared to negative 3x squared. Using exponent rules, I add the exponent, so that gives me negative 3x to the fourth and then x squared to four, which just makes four x squared. I can't combine any like terms because there are no like terms, all the degrees are different. To be a like term, you have to have the same variable to the same power, which we don't have, so this problem's done. Now, number five is where things get different. Now I have two terms on the left, and what I need to do is distribute both of them. So I start by distributing the first term. I'm gonna bring x to x to get x squared, I'm gonna bring x to three to get three x, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the two. I'm gonna take the two to the x to get a plus two x, and I'm gonna take the two to the three to get a plus six. So each term was distributed to every term in the other polynomial. Now I can combine like terms. There's no other x squared, so I can rewrite that. I have two different x terms, which I can put together to call it five x, and I have no other constant, so I'll just bring down this six. And that gives us a final answer of x squared plus five x plus six. As long as you go in degree order, your answer will be in standard form. My next problem is gonna be very similar, just with bigger numbers. The key is to get rid of the parentheses. When you don't see anything in between, that means we're multiplying. And multiplying means distributing. So I bring that 4x to the x to get a 4x squared. That 4x goes to that negative 3 to give me a negative 12x. The 9 goes to the x to give me a plus 9x. And the 9 goes to the negative 3 to give me a negative 27. Everything on the left went to every term on the right. Now we're back to combining like terms. 4x squared is the only x squared term. The 12x and the 9x can combine, since it's a negative 12x, that's gonna be a negative 3x when I put them together, and then this negative 27 can drop down. There's no more combining like terms possible, so this problem's done. Example seven looks a little different, but the concept's basically the same. I take everything from this first polynomial. The x goes to all three of these terms. So x to x squared makes an x cubed, x to negative 9x makes a negative 9x squared, and x to two makes a two x. Now I do the same thing with the three. Three to x squared makes a plus three x squared. Three to negative nine x makes a negative 27 x. And three to two makes a positive six. Time to combine like terms. X cubed comes down, because there's no other x cubed. I started with x cubed because that's the highest exponent, three. Next up, I see a couple of different x squared terms, so I put those together to get negative six x squared. I've got a couple of different x terms, which I put together to get negative 25x, and then I bring down my one constant, six. Again, as long as I went in degree order when I was combining like terms, my final answer should be in standard form. The last one's just a little tricky in the setup. Remember, anything squared means multiply it by itself. 
Don't bring this two in. That's a big mistake people make. We do not distribute that two in. Instead, we just write this polynomial twice. 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. This allows us to do our distribution. And now that I've done my distribution, I can combine like terms, and I have my final answer. In this lesson, we learned about polynomial operations. The key to polynomial operations is getting rid of the parentheses. If it's addition between the parentheses, you can immediately remove the parentheses. For subtraction, you need to distribute the negative 1 to the second set of parentheses. For multiplying, distribute everything from the left to everything in the right. If you came away with anything else, write that down now. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.